In terms of iconic motorcycling movie moments, the jump scene that Steve McQueen made in The Great Escape is surely a desert island disc for any real bike fan. In Hollywood style, the jump scene is a work of pure fiction, interwoven into the true story of the daring escape from the prison of war camp Stalag Luft III. So the original prison of war camp from the movie now lies in Poland. During the Second World War, that was actually occupied Nazi German territory. The jump scene, however, was filmed here. I'm about six miles west of a tiny town called Fusen, down on the border between Germany and Austria. I'm here today to see a faithful recreation of the jump that McQueen and his longtime biking sidekick Bud Eakins made. Obviously neither McQueen nor Eakins are alive anymore and choosing the right rider for the job was no easy task. Now it's not just any old Tom, Dick or Harry behind the bars today. Guy Martin will be the guy that's attempting to recreate the jump on this stunning modified 2019 Triumph Scrambler. This is a behind the scenes look at the jump that Guy's made, the preparation for the jump that Guy's been through. We'll take a look at the new bike. We're going to talk about the old bike. So this is Dick Shepard, Dick. You own Please, this bike. I am the custodian of it. So this bike is, there's a couple of things to talk about, isn't there? A, a the fact that it, historically the bike was too new to be of the era that the film was, was set in. Well, yeah, the, the, the reason for um, this, this bike to be used in the film and the other two bikes was because Bud and uh, Steve... Ardent were, Triumph They were. They, 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 yeah. they, Bud was a, a big Triumph dealer at the time, probably the biggest one in the world, yeah. and they would not use any other bikes. Yeah. They loved the bikes. They used to desert race them together. And... Um, they knew the bike would do the job. You know? Modified slightly, isn't it, from, from an original <coughs> TR6, which is what this is? Yeah, there's very, very, very slight modifications. It's mainly the suspension that's been altered. It, this has got what they called sidecar dampers on the back. And so side super car stiff, springs. everything's yeah, stiffer. Sl yeah, slightly stiffer, yeah. obviously, for the landing. Um, also, um, the bike's been made to look like a German bike, mm. probably a DKW, yeah, more yeah. so than a BMW. Yeah. But they've put an aerial rack on the back. Yep. Underneath this padded seat, they've got a Dunlop uh, rubber saddle, yeah, uh, leather saddle, sorry, and um, yeah, slight little modifications. The exhaust have been altered. So I know that uh, post filming this bike, did it end up in the hands of a farmer who was using it for some herd, yeah, like what, cattle herding and what stuff? What was after the filming finished? We believe that the Triumph dealer was here watching the film, and yeah. he collected the bike and sent it back to Ken. Yeah, and then Ken had it in the shop, and of course, whereabouts was Ken's shop? In Fleet. In oh, okay, Ken, yeah, I know Fleet. Yeah. And, um, Anyway, it was on display there, well not on display, it was just in the, in the showroom for sale and a farmer came in who was a motorcyclist, bought it for herding his cattle and then when he died, he left it to his farmhand who obviously used to ride it occasionally. Yep. And then we found it, well Ken helped me find it. You know. And in terms of originality, how much? How many of the parts on this were here filming probably, back in 62? Probably about 90% original. Yeah. Uh, the front tyre is a new old stock tyre. Yep. Um, obviously because the front mudguard had rotted through and we've used the original mudguard but repaired it so that we could keep that originality. Yeah. The tyre is original tyre. Well that's the tyre from the that's movie. That's the tyre from the movie. And that tyre so is... So if I kick that tyre, that's me kicking the same tyre as Buddy yeah, Kins and Steve McQueen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty cool. Where where does this live? Can people well, come and see this bike? Or? The bike goes back to the uh, Triumph visitor experience yep. and it's on, on display for people to see. And, yeah. uh, if you're lucky enough, and I'm there sometimes, we might let you sit on it and have your picture taken. We start slowly bringing this back. Hello, right, boy. Yeah, mate. How's How it going? Right? Yeah, I'm all right. Yeah, I've seen you for a bit. Picked a good day for it. Browner, isn't it? Yeah, it was shite yesterday. <laughs> Excuse my language. We're out like. Yeah, crap weather yesterday, mate. Yeah, we've come here today. They said, right, we'll maybe do a jump yesterday um, for the film. Yeah. Um, but they said no, 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 because it was a bit late getting the fence done and this and that and this and that. Right, looks like the weather's going to be better today, so yeah. we'll hang on till today. And look, yeah. Somebody got it right. Mint job, eh? Yeah. Hey, out in the back of Bavaria, mate. What a day for it. What a, let's what go all a day. the way back to the start with the idea. Where did that come from? Whose idea was it? The idea sort of came from, well... Because you're not a jumper, are you? You've never been... Uh, I've never been a jumper. I'm not a motocrosser. No. never been a motocrosser. No. I'm flat track. I've always done flat track. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, but the sort of idea came from, well, I did it. Yeah, sort of from the times, sort of, mm. no, and, and then Neil Duncanson from North One, yeah, sort of Talk took it to the it. next level and then said, right, obviously we did the D-Day programme at the start of this year and it's a big year this year, 75th anniversary of a lot of things, yeah. like D-Day being one and then the real Great Escape being the other, well, as well as loads of others. Um, so yeah, that's why, um, that's why we're here, 75th anniversary of the Great Escape, yeah, it's a big stuff. but not, it's obviously 57 years since the film, but yeah. the, 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 the real Great Escape. Which was, was nothing like no no. Poland when you say now, you were say no, you were say well, I say the real escape. When you say the one that's filmed, well, the yeah. real great escape, the film, yeah. was nothing like the real great escape. No. So because of course the whole 
this whole scene was added to the movie because of McQueen's... McQueen's love for motorbikes. He wanted to do it. He wanted a bit of a bigger role yeah. in the film. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, yeah. You, you need to get conf yeah, you could soon get confused. The Real Great Escape was nothing like the film. Nothing like yeah, the film at yeah, all. Yeah. At all. And, this, and part of this programme is to highlight that. Yeah. And... Um, so what, what, try and do the jump that they didn't do. Yeah, <laughs> that's what you're, you're going to clear it, aren't you? You're going to hopefully... Gonna, the gonna, whole... gonna, well, that's, that's, well, that's the plan. Well, yeah, that was the plan. That was the plan. The plan was to do the original jump. You've seen the film. Yeah, you've seen yeah, the film. Yeah, the original yeah. jump was where Bud Aitkins, yeah. he did um, the stunt double for Steve McQueen. Yeah. He jumped in between the two fences. Yeah. Um, and then Steve McQueen couldn't get out, crashed under the fence, yeah. got arrested, got took back to Starlight Bluff 3. Yeah. Um, and the plan for me is to jump both the fences. But the plan initially was to jump the five foot fence yep. and then alter the angle of the jump, alter the angle of the fences, Nothing and then go for the big jump. Yeah. But then we did a bit of practicing yesterday and I sort of tweaked my ankles a bit. So we're just going to go wait till three o'clock. I don't know why I was also doing it straight away, yeah, but yeah. they said wait till three o'clock and, and just go for it. Yeah. I'm just going to go shit or bust. It's, it's a bit of a cheesy question, but is it like a, a boy had dreamed to recreate McQueen stuff or? Or not? Is this just some fun for you to come and have? It's a bit of fun for me. Yeah, it's a bit of fun for me. I like the old Steve McQueen. Steve's a bloody legend. Yeah, yeah it's a bloody legend. Read his books. I just say, yeah, yeah. What he went through before he would become famous, and I think he wanted to be famous. Yeah. You know, that's what that was. You know, he was, yeah, he was just a cool character. Wasn't yeah. he? a cool character. Um, so talk to me yeah. about some of the training then. How's that going? <laughs> some of the training. Learning to jump. Yeah, well, I think it was he Andy Godbold's over yeah. there. You know, from um, the dog bowl, like the freestyle motocross, he's been teaching me how to jump because I haven't got a clue. Yeah. I've, I've done a bit of flat. Well, I've rode flat track for years. I have no never been a motocrosser. Yeah. Never been. Like a lot of road racers. I don't know you say all motor. Well, you'd know a lot of road racers, wouldn't you? Yeah. And road racers, like GP racers. I don't know if they're all failed motocrossers. I think given the choice, all of those boys would rather be um, Travis Pastrana's or well, you, you Jeremy Jonathan McGrath's. Ray, you know, Jonathan Ray's it was he a failed motocrosser? Well, you would argue that he was a successful motocrosser. He was a successful motocrosser, but he yeah. didn't make it. But I've heard I don't know. But in the last 12 months, that he'd rather be a motocross racer now. Is that right? Is yeah, that right? Yeah, yeah. Is that right? Yeah, he loves it. Yeah. 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 So I, I think that could be said for the majority of top-end motorbike racers. They, they were all, yeah. They're all failed motocrossers. Yeah. There's no skill involved in this. I'm just. Are you? Monkey see, monkey do, ABC doing That's all I'm doing. What that's, exa told. Exa that's exactly what I'm doing. Exactly what I'm doing. Yeah. So which part of the process from letting the clutch out to landing is the bit you like the least? The landing. The landing. The landing. Yeah, yeah, the landing. I'm shit. I'm shit. <laughs> I'm shit. I've been landing like a... Like, they dug a jump at my house. Andy and his mate dug a jump at my house. Yeah. How long ago did you dig that jump by? About three months ago. <laughs> yeah. yeah. The very first one. Yeah. yeah probably. About three months ago. We dug so that jump about... that long? We've been jumping about yeah, three or four months. I went to Andy Godbold's. He just wanted to see how crap I was yeah. and how much work he had to do. And he thought, oh, shit, I need to do a lot of work here. And right, so we need to build your jump that you can so do it more regular. And he knows yeah, so he, he said the best way to do this is um, we'll dig your jump. Because I, I, I got a bit of land at the back. I said, yeah. we'll dig a jump there. So him and his mate, Samson, come and dug a jump at mine. And I've just been riding all that same jump for three months. I've been getting home from work at seven o'clock. I've been riding like half an hour every night. Vroom, 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 vroom. Motocross bike. Started off on a motocross bike, and yeah. then a month ago I got that Triumph. Yeah. I got that Triumph, so I've been riding that for a month. Yeah. So yeah, two months on a motocross bike. Um, so yeah, all I've been doing, yeah, like you, like you said, monkey see, monkey do. That's all I've been doing. And you think that's that, that's working for you then? Well, yeah, but I'm at a point now. So I did a couple of jumps on a motocross bike yesterday, yeah. and I yeah, and I just said this job is going to end in tears because I'm smashing my leg. I'm yeah. smashing my leg. Um, and someone's is going to give me like today. The plan was to do the five foot fence, then yeah. do a couple of warm up jumps, and then get ready for the big jump on the eight foot fence, and then do that. That being the yeah. The, but I've just come in this morning and says, look, boys, <laughs> she's not because my ankles. Hey, I'm not. I mean, you know, yeah. I, no you're one's dying it. here. You're no it. one's dying. No one's dying. But I think if, if we're doing all this practice jumping, the job is not sustainable. I need to go shit or bust. Um, let's just go put the eight foot fence. Out. Let's just go shit yeah, or bust. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, speaking of getting on with it, mate, I'm going to leave you to it. Hundred percent. Good side, John. Oh, man. You, Thank you. Cheers, mate. So this is Miles from Triumph. You may recognise Miles from other bike world launches such as Street Cup, Street Scrambler, Scrambler 1200, uh, Daytona 765 MotoGP prototype, and many, many other machines, Miles. Thank you very much. Uh, this is the strangest field we've ever stood in, and this is possibly the strangest Triumph we've ever discussed. It's great, isn't it? It is very, very cool. What's going on? Talk me through it. Okay, so we're in the field that Steve McQueen, or Buddy Kins, actually mm. jumped uh, TR6 in the uh, British war film, The Great Escape. And uh, we're back here with a bike we've built for Guy Martin to ride in a documentary mm -hmm. of him looking to see if he can not only do the jump that um, Steve McQueen did, but actually do the jump that Steve McQueen couldn't do, which Completed. is both fences into Switzerland and freedom. Mm -hmm. And uh, we built him a bike to do it. In fact, he's, he's 
played a part in building the bike as well. So this is genuinely a bike that Guy built? Yeah, not in its entirety. We yep. started with a, with a Scrambler 1200 XE and Guy and our chief engineer, Stuart Wood, yep. spent a happy few hours taking off a few bits and pieces. Um, uh, mass optimization, taking a little bit of the higher weight off. Mm -hmm. um, and even Guy did some, um, some of the painting. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting down there. Apparently there's about 20 kilos has been shaved out of that bike, is that right? Uh, a little bit more, I think, yeah. actually. Um, yeah, and the original bike was about 166. Yeah. And uh, this isn't madly over that, frankly. Yeah. So in terms of the weight saving, you know, we've, we've covered how much you've taken off the original bike, but I think you've also removed the uh, a lot of the rider modes. Yeah. And traction control and electronic safety or rider aids that, the, yeah. that an original Scrambler 1200 would have. Yeah, so it's basically permanently programmed in the off-road pro off -road mode pro. Uh, setting, as well as the keyless and the uh, and a tune yep. to give it more poke. So there is a specific tune in this bike? There's a specific the tune that goes, uh, that gives it a little bit more low down, yep. but it also goes with the removal of the silencers, mm -hmm. just to make sure we still got a clean. Yeah, and I, and I guess uh, primarily the most obvious modification must be the, the suspension. Yeah. Um, well, there's, yeah, there's yeah, but no. 50 mil of of travel, you know, I can yeah. remember boinging all over that field in, in yeah. Portugal or wherever, wherever we went to ride these bikes. And I thought it was incredibly capable for a bike that weighed what it did and, yeah. and it's the size that it is. So this is still running mostly stock suspension? Yeah, pretty, pretty stock. The, yeah. um, this, the, I mean, this is the answer to the question, why this bike? Yeah. It's because in the Triumph range, the 250 mil suspension is the longest. and the setup for it is the longest. Yeah. And in terms of jumping, um, you want to control the landing, yeah. you know, you want to, um, but you, you need long travel suspension, you yeah. need that. So there are things that we've done with it. With the rear end, it's mainly to do with the setup. Mm -hmm. You know, the Olin's twin spring setup is, you know, that's pretty special. That's yeah. a, a really new thing. But with the show forks, they, we, we rebuilt the internals yeah. with those. And there's a fair amount of work that's gone into yeah, yeah. stiffening up. And, and making sure that we're not bottoming out, but, but it's also not going down too quick. So yeah. you just don't want too much of a compression on yeah. landing. I guess, you know, if we think about this, there's probably less than a day's work has gone into this bike from start to finish in terms of modification. So it's not really a million miles away from- No, it's pretty stock. A, a stock bike it was our plan. We, you know, we wanted to have, have a bike. Well, we wanted people to look at it and say, I could, I could have that, yeah. um, which is always our ambition. And that's, yes. that yeah, sort yeah. of was driving the plan a little bit. Yeah. Only fair that we that we give guys attempt a little bit of a, a push and people should keep an eye out on channel four for Guy Martin's The Greatest Escape. Uh, I'm just gonna try this out for size actually. See if it feels like the ones on the launch. Do you mind if I start it up? Yeah, go on then, give it a go. Sweet! Cheers, easy!